The running back position has decreased in value over time. Guys like Barry Sanders, Jim Brown, Walter Payton, and others were the focal point of offenses years ago. Now we honestly have a sad situation in the NFL where most running backs show their worth in the first few years of their contract and then struggle to get compensation after that. A big reason for this is because most teams have a more pass focused structure with an emphasis on analytics. And even with that being the case, there is one running back in particular who carried an entire team in a way we may never see again in the NFL. And even though it did not result in a championship, it was one of the most impressive running displays I have been alive to see. But it should be no surprise that this guy was able to take an entire team to the AFC championship game as a running back. But people who only watch the NFL and do not keep up with college or the high school scene may look at his first two seasons in the NFL and believe that he came out of nowhere. Well, for those who may not be familiar with his background and for those who want to take a stroll down memory lane, Let's talk about the man, the future Hall of Famer, Derrick Henry. Raised in the small town of Yulee, Florida, which was located just outside of Jacksonville, Florida, Derrick Henry was primarily raised by his grandmother, Gladys Henry. His mother, Stacy Ville, and father, Derrick Henry Sr., were teenagers when they had Derrick Henry Jr. So, his birth was a shock to the entire family, which is why his grandmother, Miss Gladys, gave him the nickname Shaka. Derrick Henry attended Yulee High School, where he was a three-sport athlete. He participated in basketball, football, and track during his high school campaign. He rushed for over 12,000 yards, which broke Ken Hall's high school rushing record. At this time, school crowds and media outlets began to nickname him King Henry due to his pursuit of breaking that record. He ended his high school campaign as the number one athlete in the nation in 2013. Derrick Henry was originally committed to the University of Georgia, but ultimately decided to play for the Crimson Tide in Tuscaloosa. And and when asked why he chose Alabama over other schools, this was his response. Here we from Florida and like the Gators so much, what drew you to Alabama? Winning. And he would do plenty of winning. However, time at Alabama was not as smooth as Derrick would have hoped for, at least not initially. While Derrick was a freshman, Alabama already had running backs TJ Yeldon and Kenyon Drake ahead of him on the depth chart. Side note though, Alvin Kamara was on that team as a freshman as well, before he transferred to Hutchinson Community College and ended up at Tennessee. Not necessarily important to the story, but it just goes to show you how deep that running back room was at that time. So. Derrick Henry was feeling homesick and frustrated with how things were going at Alabama. As soon as I get there on campus, I end up, end up graduating high school early and enroll early. So I'm like, oh yeah, I'm finna be starting. I'm thinking I'm... So when I got into practice, I'm getting pow, pow. <laughs> I'm like, why ain't you, why ain't you like uh, Trent? Why ain't you like Mark? Like, what's going on? Like, you know, it, was, it was hard for me to understand. We had like eight running backs. Our whole, the whole, the whole room was deep with seats. And then when we got out to practice, you, you better be happy you, you get a rep or where, where you at in the depth chart, you might not get no reps. A matter of me understanding that like in verse situations, it's not about like, it's not about making excuses, it's about how you get through it. Mm. So my family really just let, let me handle it on my own. Oh, good. I would call and complain and vent, but like, you ain't coming home, so I don't know what you what you thinking. Right. But at the time I was like, like how these kids do now, They go to one school and leave. Mm -hmm. I was really thinking about going to Florida State. It really came, I, I, I was almost close to, to leaving going to Florida State. But one day he had a meeting with Coach Saban. It was like, it's a process. Like, he was like, you come from um, a, a small town, uh, been in high school, you the man, you know, and you were like Superman, you know, for your team. And it's more to football than just handing you the ball and Terry telling Derek, just go, go score. The, the night before we played uh, Oklahoma in the, in the Sugar Bowl, it was my freshman year, I was like going in with the ones. So my you know, my eyes got big, I'm like, damn, I'm finna play, I'm finna play. So I, I didn't really know, I thought he was just like prepping me, you know, for the near future. 
And then he sat me down. He was like, hey, you know, I need to know, are you staying or are you leaving? He's like, if you stay, you're going to play. If not, then, I, I mean, I mean, there's nothing, nothing I can do. It's out of my hands. Mm -hmm. And I was like, shit, are you going to play? I'm going to stay. <laughs> and this was the day that everyone knew Derrick Henry would be a problem for opposing defenses for years to come. Because up until that point, Derrick Henry only had a total of 28 touches. But in the 2014 Sugar Bowl against Oklahoma, Derrick Henry rushed for 100 yards and a touchdown on just eight carries. On top of that, he added a 61-yard reception that also went for a touchdown unfortunately though Alabama would lose that game 45 to 31 and even with that being the case the college football world was put on notice the following year Dever Henry would share carries with TJ Yeldon and still have over 900 that season in the season opener against West Virginia Henry would rush for 113 yards and a touchdown in a 33 to 23 win for the Crimson Tide Due to the dual running back role he was placed in, he would only rush for 100 yards two more times that year. In one key game against Missouri in the SEC title game, he rushed for 141 yards, two touchdowns with an average of seven yards per carry. Alabama would come up short in their next game, losing to Ohio State 42 to 35. Henry had 95 yards and a touchdown in that game. So even though Derrick Henry was not necessarily the main guy at Alabama at that time, he was getting the chance to show what he had. And the following year, TJ Yeldon would go on to the NFL draft. So this would be the season Derrick Henry would show he was a force we may never see again. Making a statement in the first game of that season against Wisconsin, rushing for 147 yards and three touchdowns in a 37 to 10 win. Alabama pretty much dominated everyone this season except for Ole Miss. And the only loss Alabama had during that 2015 season, Derrick Henry would rush for 127 yards and one touchdown. However, they came up short against Ole Miss, 43 to 37. Derrick Henry would continue to have a pretty good season though, but the Heisman noise would not pick up until his first of four 200 yard rushing games. The first one being against Texas A&M in a game that he would rush for 236 yards, two touchdowns on 7.4 yards per carry. Two weeks later, against Louisiana State, he would rush for 210 yards with three touchdowns. The following week, against Mississippi State, he would rush for 204 yards. And then two weeks after that, he would rush for a career high. In the Iron Bowl, Derrick Henry would have 271 yards and a touchdown in a 29-13 victory, which would carry over into the SEC Championship game, where he would rush for 189 yards and one touchdown in the college football playoffs he will only rush for 75 yards in the win against michigan state but will put everything together and have a 158 yard rushing game with three touchdowns in the 45 to 40 championship win over clemson the entire year was great from start to finish for derrick henry he had finally become the man in tuscaloosa no longer sharing carries all of his patience, his hard work, his dedication finally paid off. And he captured the number one thing he was setting his eyes on when he came to the University of Alabama, a championship. And along the way, he was able to become, in my opinion, the best running back in Alabama history. His junior year, he rushed for 2,219 yards and 28 touchdowns. He won the Maxwell Award, the Doko Walker Award, and of course, the Heisman. The winner of this year's Heisman Trophy is Derrick Henry. He would also break Sean Alexander's Alabama rushing record with a total of 3,591 yards and 42 touchdowns during his time at Alabama. But now that all of that is over, it was time for Derrick Henry to start the draft process.
After having an amazing career at the University of Alabama, Derrick Henry was selected by the Tennessee Titans in the second round with the 45th overall pick. Derrick Henry's grandmother played a very important role in his life, and it was a blessing that she was able to see Shaka grow up and accomplish his goal of making it to the NFL. Unfortunately, after the draft and two days after Derrick Henry made his NFL debut, Miss Gladys would pass away. This is actually the uh, the suit I wore to my grandmother's funeral, who who raised me. Um, she died in 2016, and um, uh, this is her favorite color. So uh, whenever uh, uh, Eric told me that I would be coming to do a press, I was like, I, I gotta wear this suit. So we're actually moving this next week. So I was scrambling through boxes, pulling everything out, trying to find this suit and be able to put it together. So, um, you know, uh, yeah, I definitely wanted to wear this color to, to honor her and um, show all the fans around Fault Nation that I'm ready, I'm on board. And with that, let's proceed. Ezekiel Elliott was the only running back drafted in front of Derrick Henry. The Cowboys selected him with the fourth overall pick. Zeke would show early career success. Derrick Henry's first two seasons would not be exactly what you would think. Rushing for 490 yards and 744 yards respectively. And that was due to the fact that the Tennessee Titans already had a number one running back in town in DeMarco Murray, who just signed a $25 million deal deal. And with this being the case, Derrick Henry would not see as many touches right now as he would go on to see later on in his career. And it was like he was in the same situation in Tennessee that he was in at Alabama, simply waiting his time, being patient, working as hard as possible to be ready, when eventually he would become the lead back and his patience would pay off because in the 2017 wildcard game, DeMarco Murray would be out with a knee injury, which means Derrick Henry got to start that game. The Tennessee Titans not only won that game on the road 22 to 21, Derrick Henry led the way with 156 yards and a touchdown. Although they would lose the following week to the New England Patriots, it seemed like Tennessee would be in good hands at the running back position because it was in 2018 that DeMarco Murray would retire from the NFL, which opened the door for Derrick Henry to now be the main back in Tennessee. Or at least we thought the Titans would sign Deion Lewis, who would be thought of as a better fit to the newly hired OC Matt LaFleur system due to his pass catching ability. This led to Derrick Henry averaging nine carries for only 37 yards per game from weeks four to 13, and he never rushed for over 60 yards during that stretch. But the greatness of Derrick Henry would not be realized until December the 6th. This would be the day that Derrick Henry would put his mark on history against the Jacksonville Jaguars. A 99 yard rushing touchdown is something you don't see every day. Before Derrick Henry would accomplish this, Tony Dorsett would do the same thing in 1983. This would be a 35 year gap. And there are also guys who have gotten very close. Amon Green and Ronald Jones would have a 98 yard rushing touchdown in their career. And Lamar Miller would have a 97 yard rushing touchdown in his career. In this game against the Jags though, Derrick Henry would rush for 238 yards on 17 catches, breaking Chris Johnson's franchise record of 228 in 2019. The following week, he would have a 170 yard rushing day with a career high 33 touches. This would also be the season Derrick Henry would crack the 1,000 yard mark for the first time. And it finally seemed as if Derrick Henry would become the main man, the main guy undoubtedly in Tennessee. Not saying that there was any doubt before, but 
he was not getting the touches that he needed in order to be the running back that everyone knew he could be. And I believe the Tennessee Titans finally realized what they had in the backfield because up until this point, Derrick Henry had to share his carries with other guys and it took a near impossible feat for them to see what was right in front of them. Derrick Henry is a workhorse back. He needs carries in order to punish opposing defenses and you will see throughout his career teams will just get tired of tackling this guy and in the fourth quarter you will see him break off big run after big run and as soon as Derrick Henry was officially handed the keys to the running back position in 2019 he would then go on to win his first ever rushing title. In that 2019 season, he would rush for at least 100 yards six times, with his best performance being his last game of that regular season, rushing for 211 yards on 32 carries. He took the league rushing title over Nick Chubb with a 53-yard rushing touchdown. Ball team, and that's, that's something for the culture of your team. Eight for the title, and he's going to break it on a big one. He's going to get the title by a mile as Henry takes it all the way. And with the emergence of Derrick Henry, many wonder how far could a running back really take a team in 2019? A team that had only gone nine and seven on that season with QBs having so much influence on the game. Well, Derrick Henry would prove that he could get it done. In the first game this season, he rushed for 182 yards and one touchdown against the defending Super Bowl champions, the New England Patriots, in a 20 to 13 road win. The next week, Derrick Henry would show off his versatility, throwing for a three-yard touchdown pass to Corey Davis. He added 195 yards rushing in a 28-12 win over the Ravens. But the playoff high streak would come to an end against the Chiefs the following week. Derrick Henry would go from averaging around 30 attempts in this run to having 19 in this game. The Titans would jump out early though to a 17-7 lead, but Mahomes was just too much for them to handle, and the Titans soon found themselves down 17-35, so they had no choice but to attempt to pass the ball more. The Chiefs would go on to win 24-35. This was, though, an impressive run for Derrick Henry and the Tennessee Titans, and many believe that they would go on to build upon this success and make another run the following year. So, after being placed on the franchise tag to start the offseason, Derrick Henry would go on to sign a four-year, $50 million contract on July the 15th, 2020 and begin what would be a historic regular season. Although it started out kind of quiet by Derrick Henry standards, Henry would eventually go on to record over 200 yards rushing in three games. The first being against the Texans on October 18th, 2020, where he recorded 212 yards and two touchdowns, averaging an insane 9.6 yards per attempt, with his longest being a 94 yard burst to the end zone. And this success would continue throughout the season as Derrick Henry would go on to chase another rushing crown and before the last game of that season Derrick Henry had a total of 1,777 rushing yards he had a buck 78 against the Colts 215 against the Jags and now the only team standing in his way of reaching the 2,000 yard mark was the Texans, a team he had already rushed for over 200 yards against. So many were watching and waiting to see if Derrick Henry could accomplish something only seven other running backs had been able to do at that time. Not only did he get the 223 yards he needed to get over 2,000 yards, he ran for 250 yards that day with two touchdowns, becoming the eighth running back to get over 2,000 yards rushing in a season. The last man to do so was Adrian Peterson in 2012. He would go on to win the Offensive Player of the Year award, and many believe he should have won the MVP as well, just like Adrian Peterson did when he ran for over 2,000 yards. And if we look at this in its entirety, look at OJ Simpson, Barry Sanders, and Terrell Davis. They also won MVP when they rushed for over 2,000 yards. But if we look at the entire list, look at Eric Dickerson, Jamal Lewis, and Chris Johnson. They missed out on the MVP award just like Derrick Henry did, with Eric Dickerson being the only one who did not win Offensive Player of the Year the same year he rushed for over 2,000 yards. Dan Marino threw for over 5,000 yards, 48 
touchdowns in 1984, and the award went to Dan Marino instead of Eric Dickerson. So, in Derrick Henry's case, Aaron Rodgers won the award over him. If we look at Aaron Rodgers' year that year, he completed over 70% of his passes for 4,299 yards with 48 touchdowns to just 5 interceptions, which is a pretty good season. So, many understood in the modern era of football that it would be extremely hard for anyone else besides a QB to win the MVP, especially in a time where the running back position was not as valued as it once was. Either way though, it was a fantastic season for Derrick Henry. However, the Titans once again find themselves on the wrong end of a playoff loss. The Ravens would game plan for Derrick Henry in a way that no other team all season could. And this was a revenge game for the Ravens. Remember that loss the Ravens suffered to the Titans just one year ago? That was a huge upset loss at that time and well, they remembered that and game planned accordingly. And the game plan of course was do not let Derrick Henry beat us. And it worked. Henry only had 40 yards on 18 carries and Lamar Jackson would get his first playoff win, ending the Titans season. The following year would unfortunately end prematurely for Derrick Henry. In his week eight matchup against the Colts, he would suffer a Jones fracture, which required surgery. And for those who don't know, a Jones fracture is basically a broken bone in your foot. Before his injury though, Henry was leading the league in carries, rushing yards, rushing touchdowns, and was on pace to break the NFL rushing record. He did, however, make a return in the team's divisional playoff game. He had 20 carries for 62 yards, but the Titans would go on to lose against the Cincinnati Bengals in a game that ended 19-16. It was still impressive though to see Derrick Henry come back and play from that foot injury, but with that being the case, many wondered how Derrick Henry would perform after this injury in the long term. Well, <laughs> he would go on to dominate. Week after week, Derrick Henry would prove that he is one of, if not the best running back in the league. And I don't know what personal grudge he has against the Texans, but it seemed like every time he would play them, he would have a 200 yard rushing game against them. And week eight in that 2022 season, he rushed for 219 yards in a 17 to 10 victory. But this season as a whole would not be as successful as Derrick Henry was individually. He would end that season second in rushing behind another Alabama alum, Josh Jacobs. But the team would end the season 7-10 and on a seven game losing streak after starting out that season 7-3. They ranked 30th in the NFL in yards per game with 296.8 and 28th in scoring with 17 and a half points per game. Darren Henry was dominant at that time. The man almost had 2,000 yards from scrimmage that year. But it goes to show you, if your team is a one-man show, whether you're a QB or a running back, it would not work in the NFL. And to no one's surprise, everyone knew that the Tennessee Titans were Derrick Henry or bust. And that will further be proven the following season when Derrick Henry would unfortunately make NFL history for the wrong reasons by becoming the first player to have 20 touches with less than 15 yards from scrimmage. And you hear that and you say Derrick Henry is losing a step because the game that he had those 20 touches in and did not have more than 15 yards from scrimmage was a game against the Houston Texans. And this was a team, as I've stated before, that he dominated in the past. Well, let's rewind just a little bit. Looking at the numbers, he still ran for over 1,000 yards. He averaged 4.2 yards per carry. At his peak, he was averaging 5.4 yards per carry. So is it that Derrick Henry is simply getting older and all of those carries he had are now starting to catch up with him? Well, Let's look at that offensive line just for a second. According to Pro Football Focus, the Tennessee Titans had the worst offensive line in 2023. And by this time, everyone knew if you could stop Derrick Henry, you would more than likely beat the Titans. And even with that being the case, Derrick Henry did have a three game stretch where he rushed for at least two touchdowns. And in his last game that season, he rushed for 153 yards on 19 attempts with one touchdown. 
However, with his name being mentioned in trade talks throughout the season, the majority of people knew that this would be his last year with the Tennessee Titans. And in the 2024 offseason, Derrick Henry would sign a two-year $16 million deal with the Baltimore Ravens. Titans fans, I just want to say thank you for the greatest eight years of my life, the ups and the downs. Y'all been there for everything, through the adversity. Watch me grow as a person and a player, always supporting me. Um, I love y'all. Uh, I love seeing the 22s in the stadium. Hopefully I was an inspiration to all the young kids and everybody in the community. Just thank y'all so much. Man, God is good and tighten up, baby. Nothing left to be said. Ladies and gentlemen, Derrick Henry, the king. Now, me personally, even though I may be biased, I am a Alabama fan, but at the end of the day, I believe Derrick Henry will go to Baltimore and prove once again that he is one of the best running backs, and in my personal opinion, the best running back of this generation. We do have great backs in the league, but no one was able to carry a team like Derrick Henry was, and a team that really wasn't that good at all. And even though he is getting older, he may not be as fast as he once was. Was. he may not be as strong as he once was that is to be determined however i still believe that he is good enough to help the baltimore ravens in their ultimate goal in winning a championship but i think if you look at everything that derrick henry was able to accomplish throughout his career it gives you a great perspective on how good derrick henry actually was the Baltimore Ravens are now in a great position. This will lessen the load on Lamar Jackson. And I believe that entire team will benefit from having a guy like Derrick Henry on their roster. But what do you guys think? Do you believe that Derrick Henry is the greatest running back since Adrian Peterson? Or do you disagree and believe that someone else should be in that list? It'll be interesting to see your thoughts and opinions. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you in the next video.